Hey everyone, Andy here, and I'm back in the lab here with the Sony F3, and I'm checking out the latest firmware, version 1.4 for the F3, which enables a really cool feature, which is S-Log in the picture profile modes. It's now a gamma setting right in the picture profile modes of the F3. Previously on the F3, uh, in order to get S-Log, we had to either originally purchase a key, which was an RGB key, they called it RGB because it enabled 444 RGB output of the camera and S-Log, uh, later, it was included with the purchase of the camera, and they had some rebate offers, etc. But now, uh, we can get S-Log right in the gamma modes of the camera. Still need the RGB key to get 444, but we can just, for 422, normal operation, and, or just internal recording even, uh, we could do S-Log right in the gamma modes. So, of course, uh, we make a lot of scene files here, so what I've done is right away, have taken the S-Log uh, gamma mode and modified it, a little bit because now I can do that. So one big thing about having it now in the gamma modes is that I can just basically create a, a scene file with S-Log as the gamma. Uh, this is a really important option to have. Uh, before we were kind of limited with S-Log, it kind of locked out the entire menu structure of the camera, the picture profiles were locked down, etc. Now I can actually go into the, the picture profiles and adjust things, make my own S-Log settings if I, if I like to. Uh, and additional, additionally to that, I can actually uh, change my white balance uh, uh, by running a white balance. Before, when I was in S-Log mode, I could just uh, use the preset white balances or sort of do some adjustments, but it wasn't this, exactly the same. Now, with it in that mode, I am able to just uh, run a white balance like normal, basically operate uh, the camera normally, but with S-Log in that mode. Uh, one of the limitations to be aware of, though, is uh, the things we talked about in the past on this blog is the ability in the camera to use uh, lookup tables on the output of the camera when shooting an S-Log, so you have a sort of uh, view, modified view on the output. In this mode on the camera, when the gamma mode is set to S-Log, we can't use monitor LUTs. So we're strictly talking about uh, at the, the gamma mode of S-Log sort of taking over the camera, just like any other scene file. So what I've done is created some scene files for you guys to download. One, one is just a straight S-Log setting. So just so you can just turn it on and be just like S-Log would be in the uh, full on original mode. Uh, and the other one is a sort of a modified version just in using S-Log and some mixed scene file settings that I've done in the past uh, to give you sort of a modified high dynamic range, but uh, a little prettier looking S-Log. So let me show you how uh, to turn S-Log on in the gamma modes in the camera, and also uh, how you can modify it a little bit. So here we go into the camera menus. To do that, first of all, you can see here, I am in version 1.4 here. You can see it moving up to the bottom there, very bottom there, version 1.4, uh, latest version. So I'll jump into picture profiles, and right now you can see I'm already there. We'll go to the top here. I'm in the S-Log profile. I've made this S-Log profile again. You can download it. All I've done to make this profile though is turn the matrix off. Matrix off is exactly identical to the way the camera was uh, in the original S-Log mode. I did compare these two to make sure. Uh, and I've killed the detail, turned aperture off, uh, and turned my gamma mode to S-Log. Now you can see it here, different scene modes, and finally just S-Log. There it is. And it does match perfectly with the S-Log that we expect to see. So that's the S-Log setting and the gamma mode. And you can download this file or you can just dial it in yourself. Just basically turn everything off, including the matrix, and then turn the gamma to S-Log. And that is what the S-Log settings are. So uh, just like that. Now, what else can I do here, which would be interesting? Uh, I could uh, select another file and start playing around with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, look at this file that I made called the uh, Able S-Log. Uh, and in it, I've done some things like go to the matrix and add some saturation, done some matrix adjustments, et cetera, based on some of the looks that we have before. So this is based on the able normal color settings, so you can see. Uh, I've also uh, gone down to my black level and reduced my blacks a little bit and really crushed my blacks, my black gamma down to have a really nice fall off into black. Something that S-Log does is wash out the low end to get more detail, more information. It's very important to have, but here I've actually just crushed that data right down uh, to give you a more crushed look. Something you might be able to deliver to a client doesn't, that doesn't necessarily expect to see S-Log. The good news is that I'm still holding my highlight detail as I would in S-Log, just not my low end. So when using this setting, I would, I would expose a little brighter than you would in, traditionally in S-Log, uh, but you, you can see, if you, when you turn it on, you're gonna be able to see how much more highlight information you can retain. So it's a nice option to have. So there we go, there's my settings. 
I, re I named it uh, Able S Log, and you can download that file as well. Additionally, I have made some modifications to my other files, so I'm going to post all these files up for you to check out if you want to try different ones out. So that's how you do it, how you turn it on, and you can see if I just flip through this different different settings here, go back out. Uh, here's my, I'll just pan over here. You can see uh, Able S Log versus Able Range. How much more detail I get there is my traditional Able Range file, and you can see S Log how much more highlight control I have, and there's my full on S-log file. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.